All right, guys, so we are going to be working on activity two for lesson 2.6, which is our critical juncture, and we're going to be diagramming the cliff. So, um, remember that a diagram is another way that we can show um, something bigger, and, and it's just an easier way of showing it. So, does your diagram still represent your ideas, or have your ideas changed based on the evidence that we've gathered. So we worked on this diagram in our first lesson of chapter two. And remember that we were talking about our ideas about what might have caused the cliff to change. So I want you guys to stop and take a minute to go back into your packet and look back at this activity and see what you wrote down in the blank to think about what could have caused the cliff to change. Um, and then I want you to think about if your ideas are still the same as they were before or if they have changed at all. So remember that diagrams can be models and scientists use them to explain and clarify their ideas. Scientists base their, their ideas on evidence. If they gather new evidence that changes their ideas about how something happens, they can go back and revise their diagrams, which is what we're going to do right now. So our key concept for this was scientists make diagrams to show their ideas about how the world works based on evidence from investigations, models, and books. And we've been doing all of these things when we investigated the flower. We've looked at a bunch of different models of cliffs and diagrams. And we have also read the book, What's Stronger, um, to help us get a little bit more ideas for how we can answer that question about how the cliff changed. So this page is very similar to the one that we completed a few lessons ago. And we're gonna draw a new diagram to show our new ideas. So very similarly, um, we have the first part of our diagram. Um, so the first picture said the flagpole on the cliff was not very close to the edge of the cliff. So then we're gonna be thinking about somewhere in between a long time ago and now something happened and you guys are gonna use what you have learned throughout this chapter to think about what changed in the middle. And then number three says, now the flagpole is closer to the edge of the cliff than it was a long time ago. This is because the cliff changed shape. So in those blanks, you're gonna be thinking about what caused the cliff to change shape using what you know from our investigations, from our models, from our readings. What do you think caused it to change shape? So you can go ahead and pause this video and complete this diagram in your packet. If you do not have your packet, then you can go ahead and just talk to somebody at home or think in your head, what could have caused that to change? Okay, and so really quickly, we're just gonna talk about what we know from all of the things that we've done so far. So again, we know that a long time ago, the flagpole was further away. In the middle, something changed. And at the end, the flagpole was closer because the cliff changed shape. So when I'm thinking about all of the different things that we learned in chapter two, one really important thing that we learned was erosion, which is breaking down something into smaller bits or wearing away at something. I know that erosion can happen to a lot of our landforms. For example, I know, and I keep going back to this example, but mountains over time because of the wind, little bits of rock will fall off of that mountain and cause it to erode. Um, and same thing with water. We learned a lot in this chapter that water can change the shape of a cliff too. And I know that this cliff is near water. So my thoughts might be that maybe the water cause the cliff to erode or change shape, or maybe it could be due to something like wind that's also causing that cliff to change shape because of erosion. Okay, and then you guys can go on to the next video to do our very last activity for this chapter.